Welcome back, everyone, to Cause Redux. I'm your host, Mr. Mokalover, and we're here, of course, with Queen Elizabeth II and the Baldwin Affair. The dissolution of the Kingdom of Canada has radicalized many a wild Canuck who has been pushed off the edge by the loss of their homeland to exile interests. These new syndicalists and socialist rebels which occasionally pop up in this cold and frozen lands are typically dealt with quickly, with the exception of a few who manage to stick around. While the RCMP's routing of syndicalist spies typically focuses on disgruntled Canadians, incredibly, some exiles themselves get caught up in the syndicalist sympathizer rings. One of shocking examples of a high-ranking exile member of the Conservative Party, Stanley Baldwin, who has recently been arrested by the RCMP on the orders of the King, or Queen. Baldwin, the ever sly fellow, was tipped off before the Mounties could get to him and fled across the Atlantic before something could be done about him. His treason was uncovered by a heroic telephone operator who intercepted a chatter between Baldwin and a high-ranking member of the Unionist government. This member of the UOB's uh, government was none other than Baldwin's own son, Oliver Baldwin. Despite his blatant treason to the crown, Baldwin was still kept in touch with his son, and was caught on the phone blatantly slandering the noble king in his righteous suspension of democratic institutions. Baldwin's escape to London has ruffled many feathers in London, with Baldwin only being able to uh, save from arrest due to the influence of his son, Baldwin, despite being a high-ranking Tory, has stated that he plans to renounce politics and live the rest of his life in quiet retirement. I knew there was something off with that man. God, I thought he brought stability to the empire. But I guess not. So, we did this one last time, and this one. I believe we maybe read this one. We should take it upon ourselves to train a cadre of experts to man and maintain radios. Radar, another modern electric weapons of war. The radar is no simple technology. Only competent engineers and field operators ensure our station works at maximal efficiency, especially as we build more. We need ships. Or so we need armaments. We need industry. Well, state of the British fleet. If Canada is to defend itself, with much less radical, we much less reclaim the miles, we must first develop a first-rate navy. Fortunately, the legacy of the once great royal navy provides the perfect foundation, and we're starting from scratch allows us to get the most up-to-date navy possible. So here we're at. We actually pushed out a little bit with the Marines, and looks like we're getting the crap being out of us here. So we're going to go back in. As oh, I guess you know, yeah, things are going to happen now. Bro, are you kidding me? All right, just hold it real quick. They still want to attack, so what not? The world's going to crap, but you know what else is new? They just want to kill their own soldiers off like crazy. And down here, well, we're trying to break through here, but then they had some soldiers enter there. As long as we can hold the line, that's all that really matters for now. And, uh, yeah. We tried pushing out here, so we've lost about 4,000 in total between the two continents. It is what it is. And we have a little bit of... Oh, second Valkyrie. Yeah. English torpedoes found near the corpse of Cumberland. News has come from Iceland in regards to the cause of the sinking of the HMS Cumberland when we sent it to Iceland. Divers found an intact English torpedo that failed to detonate when it was launched against the hull of the Cumberland. The explosion was not an internal mechani mechanical failure after all, but an insidious attempt by English to cowardly attack us during the night. Our people clamor for revenge over the loss of our young man aboard the Cumberland who never made it to shore. The people shall be heard. Nice. I got a lot of war support too, which is fantastic. Further develop Alberta oil. Yeah, as much as I want to establish the province of Alaska, we just can't do it. And we can get another British royal tour. Oh, that'd be great to do. Can't wait to do that one. Um, anything else here as we're just kind of grinding through here. We're not going to join the war immediately. Honestly, like, as we've been doing in this campaign, we're going to leave a Europe alone. I want to take out America first, take out all, all of America, maybe Mexico, and then head to Europe, which is probably a bad idea, whatever. Um, and help solidify uh, India before we do too much else. Natal and Southern Rhodesia at seek our recognition for support. The African nationalist government of our now former dominion in South Africa has declared itself a republic and distanced itself from the empire. Two provinces of South Africa, the provinces of Natal and Southern Rhodesia, which have an English-speaking white electorate, uh, have denounced this illegal secession and declared their own independence from the newly minted Republic of South Africa. Of course, the South African government has exerted its intention to reclaim the loyalist provinces. These provinces have now sent envoys to us begging for recognition and inter intervention to save them from near certain domination by South Africa's Dutch-descended, numerically larger Afrikaner settler population. This brings forth a dilemma. A for a third Boer War could come come costly and distract us from the homecoming to a degree, but on the other hand, we can hardly condemn our loyal subjects to Boer rule. You're on your own? We can always sign a peace deal if it drags out. To prevent the war from engulfing Portuguese East Africa, Portugal will not join us against the war. Join us in the war against the Republic of South Africa. That's fine, we can do that. Uh, we're gonna need more fuel. And refineries, of course. Fuel, refineries, ships, guns, all the good stuff, you know. More planes. More already. All this stuff is going to be super, super needed. I look at another destroyer. Fantastic. The downfall of Numenor. Numenor? The Alwyn and Unwin Publishing House today received a new book by the South African author J.R.R. Tolkien. The downfall of Numenor tells the story of the destruction of the mystical land island kingdom of Numenor, who set out to free the continent of Middle Earth from the reign of the Dark Lord Sauron, but in the end fell victim to its own weaknesses and corruption, and the gods sank their proud island beneath the uncaring waves of the sea. 
Only a small band of men so loyal to the gods were able to flee the cataclysm of the sinking island to find new realms and distant lands. Professor Tolkien denied that his book was inspired by the British and French post-war revolutions and said that the initial ideas for the story, another set in the same world of Middle-earth, came to him during his time as a soldier in the churches of France. A fascinating book. Still no political power, but we are on a tour, a British royal tour. And, uh... That market rejects their claims. The Danes have rejected their claims in North Atlantic. They think they can keep their territory secure from the syndicalist threats of the fools. The time will come. We'll bide our time until an opportunity presents itself. The Danes have given us another choice to take the islands anyways. Uh, now nah, we're good. So as you can see, we're still here in Bulgaria. We're, uh, oh, really great. We're trying to attack into this tile because they've just been killing themselves like insane amount. We delivered uh, 200,000 casualties to the Bulgarians. Not how I wanted this episode to go or this campaign to go, but it is what it is. As now we're going to get rid of six Bulgarian divisions, hopefully, here. And hopefully not get destroyed ourselves. There we go. Nice. And the Marines are working on it. They're doing very, very well. We beeped them up. They're only 20 combat, but they do have anti-tank, field hospitals, pioneers, which are very good as well. Very, very good. I like that a lot. Because it does help with fort damage, or at least fort attack and defense, rivers, amphibious marshes, all sorts of good stuff like that, so. As we're getting rid of them, great. And, oh, we have Malta, too, now. IEDC, invite Malta. Oh, South African Federation, as well as invite Malta. Oh, and we're going to invest into oh, Sardinia for this one. And they've agreed. And I'll invite them as well. But we are currently doing the vineyard plan. Organic support elements. The modern industrialized army is increasingly in need of specialized support elements like engineers and scouts to achieve the best results in the field. We should focus effort on developing these capabilities and ensure that they receive the best equipment we can produce. And expand training facilities. If a nearest plan is going to work, we need to put our best effort into expanding our training facilities and transforming our soldiers into a disciplined and premier fighting force. Canada's motor industry. Canada's a rapidly growing motor industry. Oh, oh I mean, uh, better guns and bolts. That's what we wanted. Yeah. Our training plans don't help if our equipment isn't improved. Once we get the best technology and our soldiers are trained in its use, they can remain confident that the Canadian Armed Forces rank amongst the best on the planet. So we're still fighting here in Bulgaria, but uh, if we can, we're going to continue pushing upwards and onwards. Malta's joined us, which is fantastic. Dutch Opera have been captured. We're going to hopefully slowly win here, but we'll see, as it is 1940, and this campaign's going to last a long time. So here we're at. We're doing actually quite well in Bulgaria, of all places. We're doing actually okay in India now, too. Um, I'm not sure what happened to them, but you know what? When the Portuguese arrive, you don't question it sometimes. Sometimes. But we're improving our, honestly, all these facilities. I really don't care what happens in Europe. Looks like these guys have been navally invaded. But if these guys were smart, they'd do more stuff here. Um, the front has not moved at all. And nothing's happening. Except, I guess, Russia is in the war, too. Autonomous Stadt Don Kalkasin. Wow. Ostdeutsches Heer. Well, good, good luck to you guys. As long as no one kills each other off too much, that's fine with me. I don't upset the balance. The United States is doing better. The Constitutional Republic is still alive, and they're doing okay. The American United States is doing the best, though. So, I don't know why I'm investing so much time into these guys. That's a good question. You send the Marines into the mountains. You should have sent Mountaineers. That's all right. Um, and honestly, they probably want to protect the capital. You know, it's better if we do it like this. I'll take out Sophia, and then take him to here. Well, good. And over here. I know I'm taking a long time to get to war with everyone else, and we want to reclaim the empire, and this is a slow way to do it. Very, very slow way. Oh, that's not good. Can we take out the capital? We probably can. Ooh. Austria intervenes. Austria declares war, so be it. Uh, invest 50 PP, that's good. Economy, yeah. What are we doing? Building up more roads, yeah. Well, I, I don't mind the roads, I just we need as much fuel as possible. And more of this. There you go. And roads help too, and build stuff faster and whatnot, but... Obviously, it's not the most optimal way to play as Canada, but it is what it is. It's an attempt. This is my first attempt doing this. But we're doing really well with what we've got, where we're at. No, I want you guys to go here. You stay in Sofia. So, two more divisions. I mean, who knew that Canada had such a vendetta against Bulgaria, you know? There you go. About two divisions, if they can eliminate them, that'd be great. Anything else going on here? We do have our subs working there. Russian efficiency game, what is this? Sure. And we got them.
good, good, good. Support organic elements. Shell dies. Expand training facilities. Really working on the army now. Um, five is great. Anything else here? Chance to receive critical hits. We just don't have enough doctrine for anything here, really. Because I want to get rid of Bulgaria before they join the, uh, the Rex Pact. Good. Good. And we're in. Good. I'm split up. Get a little bit more organization. Let our Greek allies get to where they need to be and take up Vidin. Anti-syndicalism on the Imperial Broadcasting Service. The Imperial Broadcasting Service was founded by Sir John Wright in 1926 after the British Revolution with his previous broadcasting organization. The British Broadcasting Corporation was taken over by syndicalists, of course. The service proved invaluable in promoting loyalty throughout the British Empire as also as a tool to marginalize syndicalism uh, within our borders. There have also been calls on Saul Wright as the head of the new Canadian Broadcasting Corporation in order to begin a propaganda campaign against more moderate socialists in the country. Others have suggested uh, using Wright to employ propaganda with more external focus. To prepare for people for the coming fight against syndicalism. CBC is fine as it is. Put Wraith in charge of the CBC. Uh, put Wraith in charge so as long as he focuses his attention on our foes abroad. Well, we don't really need that. It's fine as is. Yeah, that'll help us out a little bit more. Um, I don't mind for concentrating all our soldiers here. And go through here to here to here. You might be able to do another encirclement this way. How's India looking? Looking decent overall. Good, good. Oh, and finally the Western Command Center has collapsed. Uh, help them out there. Very nice, very nice. Oh. Honestly, turn your attention this way. Do not get encircled, god dang it. Hello? Yes, please. Because these guys do have anti-tank on them as well. I wonder if we can push fast and hard enough to go through here like this. On. Good. You know what? Let's just go here. Take yourselves in there. Open it up a little bit more. That'd be nice. If you want to leave, just hold it. Just, just hold it. Fly wise, we need this tile, we really do. We need to supply through from through Sophia. Into here. Oh look, they showed up. Good, come on. Good. Just in case for the future. Ooh, investments. That's what we want to invest into. Uh, we'll go with Greece. They're still fighting. There we go. Nice. So now I want you guys to concentrate yourselves. Right here. Boom to boom. Actually, go right there. You can still take up Vlad. Vladiv? Something like that? What do you have here? Infantry, expert. Infantry defense. We're going to go with Ambusher, just in case. For tactic. Yeah, I don't like any of those. We're doing really well down here, though, now. Let us even paying attention. You go here. Yeah, down here. Just stop attacking like that. If you can get take this tile, that would be great. Circle, destroy them here. Expand training facilities. Yes. Better conception rate. My sword would be nice. Focus on the army. Oh, land after cost would be even better. Of the three divisions of our military, the army is one which requires the greatest attention. All the guns and the boats in the world would mean nothing if we do not have the quality manpower to defend the nation. Our manpower is limited. We need to make the count. And then the new warfare. The ba battlefield is changing so rapidly, it's of utmost importance that our generals keep up with the latest advancements taking place across the world. Trans Canada Airlines. Founding a national airline company capable of linking the entirety of Canada by air is no small task. But a simple airfield is all you need to link two cities together. This allows us to bypass the need for Titanic infrastructure works. The skills and techniques we learn could also apply to general air doctrines. Mm, the Night Watchman. A proposal has been put forth by the NRC to construct a prototype radar warning system, codenamed White Knight Watchman. In addition to its immediate strategic utility, this program will provide enough numerous, enormous benefit to further research into radar technology and integration into air doctrine. Yeah. And the University of Ottawa. The University of Ottawa is one of Canada's oldest institutions of learning. 
and its facility that grew the most when the brightest minds from the United Kingdom fled to the country. That gathering of intelligentsia is something we should take advantage of with increased funding on government-approved projects. The March on Ottawa. Complaints over pay and conditions at Canada's economic relief camps have continued. Now, the camp workers have organized a march on Ottawa, uh, with many of them reaching the camp level by jumping on top of trains. A large group assembled and demanded to speak to the Prime the Minister of Labor and the Prime Minister representing our uh, list of demands. Public sympathy for the workers has been high, with many new papers uh, publishing photos of the deplorable camp conditions they work in. Will we'll improve the camp conditions? Fine, just remove it. But you can see, we're doing really well in Bulgaria. Fantastically well. Let's focus on the army, and these guys should capitulate. Should they not? They have capitulated. Honestly, I, I just want to eat them all. Because we did most of the work here, so... Does it make sense for us to eat them? Honestly, no. It makes absolutely no sense, but if we eat them, we can reduce the lag. I do want Sophia. If we do that, then... Can we work around them and do that? And piss everyone else off? Yeah. Honestly, we can give that to Greece. That's fine with me. Oh, wait. Whoops. Hold on. So I... Eastern Salonika, Greece can have that. There you go. I don't know why. I just I just want it. Does it make any sense? No. The United Kingdom, Canada, and Bulgaria. But we did it. Oh God! Against Albania, who's? Ah, oh, 175 days. Well, we got some time for that. So Greece eventually won out with a few thousand British deaths, but it's all right. Now we've got a lot of things here that we got to deal with. Resistance activity is going up, but we do have our Mounties here. Overall, this could be a lot worse. Um, Pioneers, very good. Entrenchment is very nice. Uh, infantry divisions are 40 count with, so they're nice and thick. Field hospitals, I kind of want that, just in case. Anyways, it gives even more HP. Hurts our organization, though. How much workmen do we have? 1,000? Go through this, and then go through this one as well. Yeah, might as well do that. Go ahead. We don't have a big army, but we have a good army. So we go to war ever with uh, the Reichspact. We're in the Sarajevo Accords. Yeah, that's weird. Ukraine's in it. That's Wait, oh, the Ottoman Empire's in it too. Oh, that's weird. That's really awkward and weird. Hey, but the Entente's looking okay. We could have liberated them, but whatever. Uh, American Civil War. So the Marines did fantastic. We could go to war with these guys, but the American United is doing so well that I kind of want to get involved at this point. How strong is the American Union state? They have a crap ton of divisions and a crap ton of manpower. Hmm. How long would it take for us to just fight on them? 30 days? We don't have a big army. And India, actually, we, we finished off India too. We're looking very good in India. So now we're going to do this, 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 this. Um, do that as well. They have a lot of divisions, but it does not mean that they're very good. So at this point, we're going to go home. We're going to make it so that we'll continue to grind out stuff here. We're going to take out the American Union State next, because the Western Command Center has fallen. I would like to take out these guys too, just because they will join probably. Um, there's a chance they could join Japan. But they do have Howard Hughes, so. Uh, Constitutional American. How do they own. Was this Lake Erie? That makes no sense. Whatever. I need you all now. So we're going to abandon Bulgaria. Even though we just got it. Because we could. We get ready to go to war with these guys. So we'll see what happens. Alright, so this part of the campaigns where we're just going to cut ahead into... And watch what's going on. And read a couple focuses and then we'll explain what's going on. But we're going to update the Enfield real quick. Our guns are showing their age and effort must be made to push Enfield design into the modern era and beyond. Expand artillery power. On the modern industrial battlefield, artillery is king. This has much been proven extensively in the Great War. And the guns of the interior or interwar are only get larger and scarier by the minute. We must modernize our artillery armaments if we hope to send against our foes. New munitions plants. Our economic revival can now turn towards increasing our production of sorely needed munitions. Our soldiers need gun and bullets both, and lots of them. Foreign contractors. Canada only has so much of an industrial base to work with. If we're going to push beyond its limits, we'll need to coordinate with military suppliers elsewhere in the town. So propel guns. A mobile army requires mobile fire support. By mounting an artillery weapon onto the same platforms as tanks, we can economically provide a full range of capabilities to our me mechanized divisions and provide the kind of on-point firepower support that will seal the deal on most armor pushes. 
Canada's munitions industry. Our munitions industry has still room to grow. A series of economic incentives should prove interesting to investors and get those factories producing like never before. And of course, they read the new warfare as well. Expand HMC Halifax. Halifax Harbor is one of the best ports in the entire world and serves as their access point of the Atlantic and Europe. It's been stretched thin by needing to house the Royal Navy and Excel for the last decade. And the time's come to finally expand and prepare for even more ships to be serviced here. Navy Shipbuilding Steel. Canada's naval production capacity is barely adequate to maintain the former Royal Fleet, but it's just expanded back to its previous glorious days. A national program of intensive shipyard expansion will be necessary to achieve naval supremacy once again, and ensure efforts do not go to waste. Expand HMC Esquimalt. Our naval base on the far side of Vancouver Island gives us a gateway to the Pacific. We cannot become so entrenched in our belief that the only war that will ever come to Canada will be from the east. We must prepare to defend our western coast as well. Expand RCAF uh, Gander. The Air Force in Gander, an otherwise unremarkable port town in northern Labrador, is a key to control the skies over the northeastern coast, as well as an excellent transitioning point for aircraft flying across the Atlantic. We need to work hard to get it built up where the airfield will be useful, and now we'll expand the RCAF North Bay. The North Bay Air Force Base, not too far north of both of Toronto and Ottawa, is one of our most vital. In its range, it covers over one half of Canada's population as the most vital industrial centers. It's also RACF's most important training locale. We must ensure it's kept in top condition in a period air training program. No matter how well designed, an airplane is ultimately only as good as its pilot. A large and dedicated training program will help ensure that we have a healthy supply, and its extensions to other members of the Entente will allow us to pool knowledge and help our allies reach our level of greatness. And I want to read about uh, Royalist economic policy. Disrupt, distrust for capitalism has been brewing since the revolution, notably capitalized on by the Socreds and their economic policies. While the actors are unwilling to abolish banks like Socred suggests, the transformation of the Canadian economy from a free trade system to a state capitalist one has been agreed to by, to by the Privy Council. For the betterment of Canada and the reclamation, all business shall be placed under government control, ensuring the control of our economy lies under the control of the King and government, and then the beaver awakes. The Canadian war economy is now firing on all cylinders, and both British and Canadian industrialists are alike are taking full advantage of this, and many new factories are sprung up across the entire nation to prop this up. The mighty Canadian beaver just keeps on building. And then, the wonders of the electromagnetic spectrum. Oh, can we need aluminum? Yeah, I can use quite a bit of aluminum. And steel, honestly. No political power, but you know what? We're pretty much used to it at this point. We have high uh, influence and popularity. Developed on the back of his original research into high-frequency disruption finding, HFDF, or Huff Duff, uh, utilizing the tracking of storm fronts, British-born exile Sir Robert Wa Watson Watt, claimed through dubious descendants of the famous engineer and invention, or inventor of the practical steam engine, James Watt, has worked with a team of Canadian telecommunications and electromagnetic specialists and engineers in order to create a form of radio direction, binding or radio location technology that uses radio waves to determine the ranging uh, azimuth and radio velocity of objects relative to the source of electromagnetic output. Commonly called radar, or radio detection and ranging, as based on the name developed by the U.S. Navy in early prototype designs, this new technology will allow the Canadian and British militaries, primarily the Navy and Air Forces, to have a degree of early detection unlike the world has ever seen. Thanks to Dr. Watson Watt, the remnants of the British Empire shall be safer from ever before, for not even the vast expanses of the sea and skies can hide our enemies from us any longer. The wonders of modern science brought to bear for the warfare. So we're going to end it here. Greece is slowly expanding through Albania. Good job for them. The Russians are actually pushing into the Reich's Pact. The front literally has not moved here in the Second Belt Creek. Um, we used to take Gibraltar, but we didn't. We lost it apparently. And many of India is now fighting the Baratia Commune, and they're actually winning. So overall, it's not bad. Even though I do know this is the weirdest way for us to ever take out um, pretty much anybody here in America, and we really probably shouldn't. But I don't really care. I want to try it out. So hey, if you enjoyed the cam uh, campaign, the video so far, or enjoy the video, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow as we're going to jump around a whole lot more and win the wars in America. Annex them probably, and then maybe start focusing on Europe. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.